What's going on? Welcome here to another video on my YouTube channel. Yes, that's a plane. Yes, it's smiling. Um, Two, three years ago, I been living like a digital nomad. Uh, I been living that lifestyle in the past for more than six years or about six years. Uh, and actually I was a digital nomad before I even knew what a digital nomad was supposed to be. Someone had to introduce or I had to explain what it meant, like the dig like a digital nomad. More and more people are like really looking how to be one and how to become one. I kind of hung up that cape of being a digital nomad in the last two, three years. And there is a video that I made also here on my YouTube ch channel called The Dark Side of Being a G Digital Nomad, where I in-depth explain my reasons of uh, not doing it full-time anymore. I had an incredible time in those six years, uh, but to everything, there's like, uh, there's two sides to everything, right? Now in this video, I actually wanna explain a few questions that I have been asked in the last six years uh, that I wanna answer here. Uh, but I also wanna actually give some pieces of advice and tips and even a few words of caution uh, that I will explain later when I go through uh, the lists. You know, let's just kick off this video, right, uh, by me just answering, well, what is a digital nomad? What does it mean to be a digital nomad? It's super simple. Uh, when you have a remote job that you can do on other locations, not just in your apartment or where you don't have to go to a specific place, in the country where you live, but that you can just travel, take your laptop with you. It's that you're location independent. You're not bound to a location and you can just remotely work. That's what a digital nomad is and that's how you become a digital nomad, by doing a job that you can do remotely. So that's kind of that question answered. <laughs> Through those six years when I was actually traveling as a digital nomad and working remotely, uh, I also, uh, of course, have been asked quite a lot what I do, not alone in those locations where I was then, right? But also when I sometimes came here to Belgium and I ran into people that I know that they were like, how do you do this? And the first part I answered, right? It's just have a remote job. And that's what I also had. And I've talked in quite a lot of videos actually here on my channel as well, what I do. Uh, so I basically have founded two platforms and the first one is called the IPS project and it's an educational platform on life. I work like with a small team on it and we provide educational life through practical articles, through podcast interviews. So I interview other people uh, on life topics or through um, travel trips. Now that is more location dependent, of course, but we don't do it all the time and through online courses. Also, I do offer therapy and coaching, individually therapy and coaching. And that platform is also a place where you can find uh, psychologists, therapists, coaches that you can work with, right? Individually, mainly online. The other platform that I founded is called the Heart Warrior Project. And this is a project um, that I created for fellow cardiac arrest survivors because I am, well, I had a cardiac arrest and I've been living my whole life basically with a chronic heart disease, which likely also resulted in the cardiac arrest. And I, yeah, created that platform to provide, well, it's where I talk uh, with other cardiac arrest survivors to provide tips and advice for other survivors. The way how I earn money there, or the revenue model, uh, also, well, very simple, it's through merchandise. I created uh, like a very cool mug, like a very inspiring mug that I personally use every day myself. And a t-shirt, uh, which is also, yeah, one that I wear often. They are my two main focuses in my life. All right, let me now dig into some tips and advice that I want to share actually here to other aspiring digital nomads, to you, if you are 
one of those people. Not all digital nomads have their own company. You know, you don't have to have your own company. Most people that you will meet when you are able to travel abroad and work abroad from wherever you want will also be freelancers or will also work for a company, but just will do it online uh, remotely. Don't stress out or don't have the misinterpretation that you yeah, have to have to have an own company or anything. You don't. Uh, yeah, you can work for, for someone else too and that's totally fine. It's really trendy, right? This, you know, lifestyle of being a digital nomad. So many people want to live it and I can fully understand. Like, it enriched my life in so many ways. And this is what I would say uh, just as a piece of advice, right? I'm not telling you what to do at all. You can freely decide, right? But when you are searching for a job, search for a job that you actually find meaningful or challenging or where you feel that you can learn things from. Don't just find a random job so you can live like a digital nomad and post photos on your Instagram on the beach with a coconut. The reason why I'm saying that is because I also have met actually uh, a lot of digital nomads who just, yeah, just applied for some job that they didn't like at all, but that they were able to work remotely with. And it's not because you are on an island on the beach with a coconut in your hand that work is not gonna affect your day or your moods or your mental health. You know, it's still gonna affect you whether you're on an island or in an apartment. Sure, the island might be slightly better, but also after a while, the place that you're at will also kind of normalize and the island will also not be so incredible anymore. And your job will drag you down and it will affect your mood. And again, I'm not saying that if you really want to do this and there's just this one opportunity of a job that you don't really like, but it gives you the opportunity to do travel and be location independent, I'm not telling you to not take it, right? But it's not a good long-term plan. And that might be your plan, right? To just just do that for a year or two uh, so you can travel and be location independent. Great, that's that's a good plan. It's never bad to already think long term. You know, even if it's not, long term doesn't mean forever, right? But in the search of finding a job, if you don't have a job yet that you can do remotely, also search for one, or that's what I would suggest, right? Also search for one that actually does feel meaningful to a degree, right? Or where you do feel like you can have, where you are challenged by, or where you just can learn a lot of things from, and that you, you do find interesting. It's just gonna make this whole lifestyle of being a digital nomad so much more fun and pleasant and worthwhile. All right, and this leads me actually to another piece of advice and well, showing the other sides of a digital nomad or more the, the, the whole coin, you know, the two sides of the coin, you still have to work as a digital nomad, right? You do see a lot of photos where people seem to be just like traveling and having fun. But the reality is that you have to work no matter if you are on an island or wherever in the world that looks stunning on photo and you can you know you can work while seeing that beautiful view which is amazing and really great but you still have to work you know people still go to meetings remotely still have calls still have deadlines that doesn't per se stop all of a sudden because you're working from another location right this is actually what I talked in depth about in the video on the dark side of uh, being a digital nomad. In kind of a nutshell, what that video was about is just, and what I also want to share here, but maybe less in depth, is that you can, um, you can burn out and in a way become lonely. Why is because, well, you're in another country, uh, other people, you know, that also are digital nomads are also there, like say Bali, for example, a lot of people come and go there. 
just like you are. And if you are there for half year, like I've done, uh, the amount of people that you meet, that it's so many people, which is really cool to one side, right? But at the same time, you meet people, you become friends with them, you invest time in them, and you get all these cool moments with them, and then they leave and then they're gone. And you gotta start over again. You gotta find other friends and reintroduce yourself. This is a side of being a digital nomad that is not so much shown and not so much talked about, while it's very real. And <clears throat> I also, when I talked about this topic, like in that video of the dark side of being a digital nomad, there were a lot of people, or not, well, some people were kind of in a way hating on me for pointing it out. And this is by no means, you know, me sharing this or the other word of caution that I already shared here. This is by no means like an attack on the lifestyle, right? Like, I mean, I've been... I, I was for six years a digital nomad. If I hated it, I wouldn't have done it for so many years. I loved so many parts of it, but I am showing, I'm trying to show just the reality, you know, that some people might not show or not talk so much about to help you just see what it is like to be a digital nomad, the full picture, not just a, a small part of it. Burning out socially is a real thing. Um, I've also talked with many digital nomads when I was traveling who also just shared the same thing, which eventually also led me to the decision of kind of not being a digital nomad anymore, or at least not full time. The best way that I've uh, met a lot of other uh, interesting people or people who are quite aligned with you know, who I am is through co-working places. And every city has a co-working place, you know, or, or even you know, like multiple co-working places. And often there is like, there's a community there. It's like a place where you can not alone work and have like an office or, or like a meeting room or like a Skype booth or maybe, well, just a call booth. Saying a Skype booth now is a little bit out of date, I guess. But they also do often like events and meetings with other digital nomads or workshops, you know, where they talk about a specific subject. Through that, I have met a lot of incredible people. Now, of course, uh, the biggest downside is that it costs money, right? You pay a membership. And even in other parts of the world, the membership is not always more, so, so much cheaper than in Europe or in America. In Bali, like honestly, the membership was as expensive as I would pay here in Belgium. There are other ways to meet people and one of them is meetup.com. Uh, That's a great website that I've used so many times when I was abroad, where you can just kind of sign up for the things that you're interested in, you know, uh, for board game meetups, for uh, climbing meetup, for, I don't know, going out meetups, I've met when I was living in Barcelona, so many people through meetup.com and made my own friend group through meetup. Okay, a few more a co-living, you know, when you are looking for a place to stay at, look for a co-live place, you know, like a place that has other people living in it. And there are co-living places that are more trying to promote themselves toward digital nomads, where you then also are living in a place with other people that you can easily become friends with. That's also a great way. You need a place to sleep at, so why not also, yeah, find a place that will also give you the opportunity to meet potential friends. If you wanna go, this is also more on the pricier side, but it's really cool. There are like tribes, like Wi-Fi tribe, for example, or Hackers Paradise is another one, but I never went with them, but I've went with Wi-Fi tribe, uh, on a trip to Budapest for a month, you basically go, or that's how they work, right? For a month, you live together. So y you live as well with other fellow digital nomads in a house. They provide also a co-working place that's included in the price. And you do things together with each other. You know, you have your little tribe of people that you live with for a month um, or longer. 
and uh, they travel each month to another country and you can just tag along or you can choose which one to join. And then another way, uh, another free way, you know, to meet people is through Facebook, you know, Facebook groups. Just the country where you're in, look for a group of expats in Antwerp, expats in Barcelona, expats in Bali, and you will likely find a group, an expat group, in that country, in that city where you are in. Or there are some uh, groups, expat groups, that also do events, you know, that they say like, ah, oh, today we're working in this coffee bar. This day we're working in that coffee bar and you can just go and join. Like, I've joined a few of those. And that's a great way also to meet other digital nomads, other people. I want to end with a last piece of advice, which is also a word of caution. Yes, <laughs> another one. Be careful with buying an online course that sells you how to be a digital nomad. And I'm not saying that there can be good ones, right? I'm not saying that, but I specifically mean be careful with buying one that, that is like hundreds of euros or dollars or even thousands uh, that, you know, that costs that much. I don't really understand what they will teach you, to be honest, besides what I've told you here in this video, basically. <laughs> Often they kind of want to sell you like the secret to be a digital nomad and have financial freedom. But those secrets are really not complicated and you can just find them with a quick Google search. And along with that, I also want to say, also be careful with, uh, like you have a lot of digital nomad coaches who, who will coach you to be a digital nomad. And I never went to one, uh, but I also just wonder what they, like I have no idea what they will teach you to be honest. Like I, or I, I like, I don't get what they will teach you. Because again, it's really not difficult to be a digital nomad. So I don't know what they kind of will coach you with. All right, so those were some words of advice, tips and words of caution that I, uh, yeah, wanted to share. If there are any more, you know, questions about this lifestyle, uh, being a digital nomad, then yeah, just go ahead and leave a comment and I will try to reply. Uh, on your comments. Also do check out the description like anything that I mentioned I will provide or I will link up in the description of this video. But ciao! Thanks for watching and have a nice day.